Hey, it's been a few weeks and, um, well, during that time we got the bestseller badge on Etsy, which was crazy. I've spent many late nights making and soldering rulers, which was honestly pretty fun. But beyond all of that, you've all been so lovely and I always feel some apprehension and maybe just vulnerability, I guess, putting anything out. So I'm truly grateful and thank you guys. Now, a project like this is always a very singular journey, one that most people don't appreciate or really get, so I don't share this story, but you guys are engineers or students or maybe just curious, and I'm sure a few of the lessons I took away from the 12 months of design will serve you at some point. I definitely learned a lot, and although I can't really cover a year's worth of ideations and iterations, we can jump around to the interesting parts and I'm sure you'll see just how much fun this was. Now I wanted to make a PCB ruler for a few years, but I always felt a bit disinterested because a few already existed. Great ones existed, ones plastered with so much stuff that I couldn't possibly offer anything more. I mean, look at this, what else is there? But while working on other projects and spending more and more time designing PCBs, I got a sense that the components of a PCB, like the pads, the traces, the silkscreen, all of it, although intended for very specific uses, had some curious unintended uses. Take traces for instance, obviously they're used to carry electricity, right? That's the point of them. They're these subsurface copper pipes, which means they have some thickness to them. You can feel them. And some of you might recall that in the PCB business cards I made a while back, I used traces to create some three-dimensionality for aesthetic and tactile effect. But there is another way to leverage their thickness, and if you look closely around each of the parts on the ruler, you can see it. Because each part is outlined with traces to serve as tiny jigs, helping to hold the parts in place, which makes soldering a little bit easier. Pretty simple, right? And this is just one basic example, but there are many of these, and hopefully you can see why I really fell in love with PCBs, because the medium was decadently rich and much more than just an exotic fiber board that you could print on. And I suppose that just made me more curious as to what I could come up with. And many of my early iterations were just explorations into all of this. I'll show you what I mean. On this prototype, I was experimenting with using traces to create different three-dimensional textures across the board. That didn't really work. This one I tried creating a starry night out of pads, which was cool, but eh, not the aesthetic I wanted for this. This one I experimented with putting a material specification list on the back of the ruler instead of constants and conversions, but that was a bad idea. This one I tested Roman numerals instead of integers. I think I'm neuroatypical. This one I tried putting a layer of copper underneath the text to push it forward, sort of like embossing it but it distorted the silk screen. This one I trialed a 90 degree protractor because, um, usability. This was an interesting one where I tested 3D printing the entire thing, then pausing the print and dropping the lens into it, then continuing the print, which embedded the lens in place so it could never be removed, which was pretty cool, but I'm too lazy to do that every time. But you get the idea, and every project takes the same form that this took, with a great boundless divergence of possibilities, followed by a steady convergence onto a possible solution. And it was the same process with the spirit level and the magnet and the LEDs, I just kept exploring and testing until I could justify every decision. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering how I could justify which constants, SMD sizes, conversion factors and parts to use because every discipline demands slightly different things, right? So how do I possibly pick? How do you navigate a million different options, none of which are right or wrong? Well, I picked what I liked what I thought made sense, what I personally used and what my friends used, and I looked at many of the courses that most disciplines have in common and figured that at some point most of us, regardless of discipline, are going to need to know a few of these things. And you can probably also notice that I included much related to electronics, in part because I just like it, but also because most disciplines these days are having some form of electronics integrated into them. Everything is heading that way. And once all of those decisions were made, we entered the next distant but inviting land of aesthetics. And now is a good time actually to digress and talk about an abstraction trick I, and I'm sure many of you, use when designing really anything. Because it is very useful to think of the design process as you might think of composing music or building a house. 
we have a foundation or a baseline, in this case the PCB, right? Everything is built off of that. Then we have the structure, the walls, the roof, the mid voices, everything that gives the foundation its character. In this case, the lens, the level, the LEDs, the constants, the protractor, all those feature additions. And finally, we have the decoration or the melody. And that is what makes something memorable. This is what makes it distinct. I mean, what makes a house a home? It's not the floors or the roof, it's everything else. The pictures, the furniture, the decor, right? But what makes a piece of music memorable? It's not the bass line, even though that's supporting the entire piece, but it's the melody. Or what makes you, you? It's not your legs or your arms or your body, it's your face. That's you. It's why if someone hates you, they try and hit you in the face, right? And the reason it is useful to think of it this way is because it allows you to spot what is missing easily. Because it is impossible to know when a painting or a sculpture or a design is finished, you know? A painter always struggles to put down the brush. But although it is hard to see when a painting is done, you can see when a painting is no longer missing something. I mean, imagine if I just put all the features of the ruler in their own box in a grid and walked away. It would be as functional, but something is lacking, right? In the same exact way that if you walked into a friend's house that had walls and a roof and a floor but nothing else, it's still a house. Functionally it is perfect, but something is missing. The decor, the melody, the aesthetics, they're important. So after all the parts and features were chosen and roughly assembled, I knew something was still missing and I knew I had the foundation set, the walls up, so the aesthetics needed work. But the thing about PCB rulers is that every component is designed for a specific use and nearly every part isn't meant to be seen by anyone. You can't see the PCB in your phone or your laptop, you can't see the button on the side of your phone, and even the things that you can see, like the lens or the spirit level, aren't designed to look nice, they exist for a very narrow purpose. And hopefully you're beginning to see the problem I got myself into because every aspect of the ruler wants it to look artificial, ugly, sterile and boring because for their intended uses that was okay, they didn't have to look nice, they just had to work. And yes, there is a part of me that likes the engineering raw aesthetic, but it can so easily look gimmicky and lazy. So for the ruler, every aesthetic decision I made was to wrestle it back from the natural state of being so sterile and boring into something that wasn't. And principally I did this by making use of space, giving your brain a second to adjust itself to the different parts of the ruler in the same exact way that we separate concepts and language with a period, a breath, space because our brains need a second to adjust or we get overwhelmed and if you look for it you can see how much space was wasted on the pcb and hopefully you can also see that it was space well spent i also tried to make use of every aspect of the pcb so i used reflective pads for the smd size reference and revealed traces for the resistor value table and instead of just holes i used plated through holes because they had that silver outline i like again all pulling it away from the normal pcb aesthetic where you just print everything on the silk screen but instead creating some depth to the user experience so that you weren't struck by everything at once. Because it's small things like this that create some separation and relief and ease the overwhelm that a ruler like this can so easily cause. And in a more blatant defiance of the PCB's artificial nature, I leaned on the quote that nothing in nature is straight and struck it head on by placing some golden ratio arcs on the board, which I kind of fell in love with. And for me, they made it feel complete or no longer missing something. And I guess the last thing to mention, although it's the least interesting part, is the manufacturing. Because if you have the skills and hardware for it, making a prototype takes no real time at all, like 100 hours, but making something manufacturable, even at a scale of just 50 units, sucks and is infinitely more difficult than I honestly expected. And the engineer's ruler is no different even though it might look simple. I mean it has 15 parts that have to be put together, printed, cleaned, tested, soldered and the first ones I made took over two hours each to assemble and although I've gotten that time down to about 30 minutes a piece through in part buying a lot of equipment and also getting good, it is still a complicated and difficult task that demands constant refinement but luckily late nights spent soldering and listening to audiobooks is something I like. And on that note, Thank you for watching and I have many more projects coming so subscribe and stay tuned. I really appreciate all of you.